primary concern any filmmaker uh, interviewing victims of sexual violence must have on their mind is not to re-traumatize the victim, uh, not to add to the trauma that they have experienced. It's important to leave him or her in a good, peaceful state of mind and never to leave a survivor after the interview crying or in total distress because of the interview. So make sure as an interviewer that when you ask questions, you at the end of the interview um, talk again about lighter topics that are not so controversial and um, that allow the, the survivor to calm down a little bit and to feel better. Speaking as someone who's given a, a bunch of interviews in different settings, um, I think the most comforting and sort of um, closure-giving way of ending an interview is for the interviewer to ask me if there's anything else that, um, that I want to share or if there's something that I've missed. Let them know what comes next. What is the timeline of your production of your video? Uh, when they can expect to see it? and ensure that they will be able to see it prior to it being released to the audience that it's intended for. It's incredibly important to include a resource for survivors to get help in any kind of work related to sexual violence. Um, oftentimes stories of survivors or content can be triggering or can also be really motivating for somebody um, who is suffering and who has yet to take that first step to getting help. So it's not just that you're going to walk in there, pick the interview and walk out, because that to them will be quite offensive. So it's those other um, mechanisms that you're going to build around the interview that matters a lot. The interviewer might uh, give the possibility or contact information of therapists or mental health professionals who can maybe help the survivor um, in his trauma or her trauma and help them go beyond it and start again a normal life. I think if a survivor has gone through the whole process of first agreeing to that interview, which is a big step, no matter who you are, and then preparing for that interview, and then sitting down with that interviewer and the camera crew and going through the whole cathartic process of sort of sharing, you know, something so personal to you. I do think it's just, um, I think it's just a simple act of respect toward the survivor that they would be able to see the finished product before it is disseminated. This way they can know what to expect. It can alleviate some of the anxiety and if they see something that they changed their mind about sharing, then it can be taken out prior to the release. Their personal circumstances can change. They may not feel comfortable in having their story told at all, or they may not feel comfortable to have it released the way that it was filmed. Maybe uh, initially they have agreed to be interviewed without any protection measures, uh, but then, in the meantime, something happened that uh, caused them to want uh, their identity to be protected. So for all these reasons, to ensure that we are not re-traumatizing uh, the survivor, the final version must be shared with them before it is released. One other element uh, that, that is very important and I would uh, advise any, any filmmaker or activist taking video from survivors of sexual violence is to make sure that they remain in touch with the interviewee. Sometimes it's impossible to stay in touch because they have no emails, they don't even have electricity. So if there is someone, a liaison, who helped make the connection for you, you know, uh, uh, you know a, uh, a human rights worker or a, you know, a, somebody with a church, stay in touch with that person and so that they can convey back what, what, what you are doing. Finally, a very important element that an interviewer should keep in mind is to never make promises that cannot be kept, to really be strong on the facts that he or she says 
and to be to be sure of elements that he gives the information that he gives to the survivor and do not create false hopes i believe it is our responsibility to make sure that we did no harm not only during the filming of the interview but later after the material is published One of the things that I like to tell people who are planning on doing more than one of these kinds of interviews is that it's really important to take care of yourself and that self-care is a really essential aspect of doing this work well. If you're not on top of your emotions, if you're not on top of your health, if this is a time when you're worrying about everything else, you're not there for the person and you're not able to do a good job. So it's really important that you take breaks from this work when you need it, that you make sure that you're in tip-top shape because you want to do right both for the cause and for the individuals that you're interviewing.